Hey everyone, Ms. Butler here. Got a video on net ionic equations. Uh, sorry I got a little cold. Um, if anything, that'll be better for you guys because I'm trying to get this over with. So we've seen this already, but I don't think it hurts to go over it one more time. Um, some vocab on solutions, because a lot of the times when we do reactions, we're going to have solutions that are reacting. So a solvent is whatever um, is doing the dissolving. A solute is whatever we put in to dissolve. So a lot of times in our class, um, we have a solute, some sort of powder that we dissolve in a solvent, which is usually water, um, stir it up, get it to dissolve, and then we have a solution, which is a homogeneous mixture, meaning a mixture of this chemical and of water, um, and we call that an aqueous solution if water is a solvent, which, again, um, pretty much all of the time in our class, water will be the solvent, so it'll be aqueous solutions, AQ for aqueous. So what happens when a solid dissolves? When I actually put the solid in the water or in the liquid, what actually occurs on the molecular level? Here's what's really going down on the molecular level. So we have some water molecules that look like this. Um, I just did table salt here. So it's NaCl is the same salt that you have in your kitchen. Um, and so we have a nice lattice crystal of sodium and chlorine ions. But what happens when we actually put it in the water is they separate. So we get our Na plus and the negative, the partially negative side of water, which is the oxygen, um, kind of orients itself towards the positive sodium. And then negative negative ions, the chlorine in this case, um, are then surrounded by, I call Mickey Mouse's ears, these guys, the partially positive hydrogens. Um, so essentially what happens is it breaks apart into positive negative ions and the water surrounds it in a way that we can't actually see then the salt with our eyes. Water is very, very good at doing um, this dissolving, especially if it's ionic things, because it's polar. So we know that the oxygen is not sharing electrons equally. It's hogging the electrons. It's hogging the electrons with the hydrogen, which gives it an overall partial negative charge, which makes the hydrogens overall partially positive. So this molecule is has a dipole, making it a polar molecule, right? Um, and because we have this partial negative up here and partial ne positive down here, makes it really good at dissolving things that have positive and negative charges. So from here on out, when an ionic substance dissolves in water, it's going to break apart into cations and anions. Sometimes over our reaction, we put this H2O liquid to indicate that it's dissolving, um, but usually after a couple of times, I will stop writing that because this aqueous, aqueous lets us know that something's dissolving. So you can see I have an ionic, there's my positive cation, there's my negative anion. Um, in the compound, the salt, they're actually neutral, right? One of each cancels out. But once we put it in water, we get splitting up happening, positive cation, there's the ammonium ion, and the negative nitrate breaking apart. So how are you supposed to know if something will dissolve? Because not everything will dissolve 100% of the time. Um, some things will or some things dissolve so well, it might not be 100%, but we consider it very, very close. Um, so these are the solubility rules. If you have an ionic compound with a nitrate, those are soluble and we don't have any exceptions. Um, if you have the um, chlorate, same thing. Um, chloride, I would like you to learn. Um, those are soluble. Anything bonded with chloride are soluble, meaning they will dissolve unless we have these exceptions. Silver, mercury 2, and lead. Um, again, some negative ions for you to look through. And then here's some cations, sodium, ammonium, and potassium, soluble with no exceptions. The five that I starred, I would like you to memorize for our class. Um, I don't think it hurts to memorize the other ones, especially if you're going to be taking AP Chemistry. Um, but um, the five that are starred, I would like you to memorize those rules. The rest um, we'll get more familiar with as we go. So pause the video really quick. I'm going to give you 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, and I want you to label as soluble or insoluble. So pause. All right, check your answers. Um, obviously, you may have had to look at the solubility rules for some of these, um, but we have KNO3 is soluble, BaOH is soluble, BaSO4 is insoluble, meaning it will not dissolve. Na2SO4 is soluble. CaOH2 is slightly soluble, so kind of in between it won't dissolve 100%. And then Fe2CO33 is insoluble, meaning it will not dissolve. 
So now that, now that we've had a refresher on solubility rules, we're gonna do different types of reactions. So first, what we've been working with in this class are complete balanced equations. So it tells us the overall stoichiometry, and I know you don't know that word, but basically it tells us the overall coefficients, but it doesn't actually tell us um, who's reacting with who necessarily, like down to the details. We can do a complete ionic equation, which shows all of the ions that are strong electrolytes, so all of the ions that are being dissolved and breaking apart. And the one that we're going to learn about and focus on the most is called the net ionic equation. And this is essentially the main players, who's actually doing the heavy lifting in this reaction. Okay, um, so it's almost zooming in and just looking at who we care about. There are some elements, compounds, ions that are not involved in the reaction, they're called spectator ions. So they are present, but just like a soccer game, they are not actually playing the game, they are the audience or the spectators in the crowd. So when I go from the regular reaction that we're used to seeing to the complete ionic equation, um, these are things that we are not going to break apart into ions. So if you see any solids, any liquids, or gases, we are not going to break those down into ions. We just leave them as is. If there's something that says aqueous, but we know it's not soluble based off solubility rules, we will leave that. And then weak acids and weak bases. For now, I will tell you if something is weak, a weak acid or a weak base, um, we will learn about those more in our acid base unit at the end of the year. So here's our first example. I'll do this one with you guys. Um, I want you to write the full balanced equation, the complete ion equation, and the net ionic equation. Um, so first, I'm going to put in some kind of symbols. Let's see. I see K bonded with Cl, and we know chlorines are um, pretty much always soluble unless they are with uh, three exceptions, but K is not one of those exceptions. So this is soluble, which means it dissolves in water aqueous. I see lead nitrate, lead 2 nitrate. Nitrates are always soluble, no matter what, who they're with, no exceptions. So that means this guy is aqueous. So I have two aqueous things mixing together. Now I have a chlorine. And again, chlorine is usually soluble unless it's with three exceptions. And it turns out that lead is one of those exceptions. So this is insoluble, meaning it will not dissolve. So we put a solid. And last but not least, we have KNO3. Nitrates are always soluble, doesn't matter who they are with, so this guy is aqueous. Now I'm going to go back and balance. Let's see, I got two nitrates on this side, so I need two of my nitrate groups over here. That gives me two potassiums, so I need two potassiums on this side. That makes two chlorines, which we already have. So I got two, one, one, two. So this right here is my complete balanced equation. Now I need my complete ion equation. So this is the equation where we start to split things up um, and we only break up things that are aqueous and they follow the solubility rules. So let's start with this first guy here in green. I have KCl, which is aqueous. That means it will dissolve. I see that there are two K plus ions, which are aqueous, right? This two goes to both things, plus two chlorine minus aqueous. I'm getting these charges from the periodic table just as a refresher. Now let's go to the next one. This whole thing is aqueous. I have one Pb2 plus aqueous, and that two came from over here. Plus, at this two, I have two and then the one, so really just two overall nitrates. So if you have a little subscript outside of the parentheses, that applies to whatever is in the parentheses. Um, so I have two of these nitrates that are aqueous. Solids, we leave solids all together. PbCl2, solid, plus, and now we do our last aqueous piece, 2K plus because of this two, plus 2NO3 minus aqueous. All right, so our last, our next step is to find spectators. Spectator ions are the ones who aren't changing from before and after. So I'm maybe an aqueous ion on the left and an aqueous ion on the right. If we look, I notice, maybe, we have 
k plus, k plus, right, staying as aqueous, and we have 2NO3 minuses, 2NO3 minuses. So, for our net equi ionic equation, those um, guys that I crossed off are called the spectator ions. They are present for the reaction, but they're not actually doing the heavy lifting. So, for our net ionic equation, we write everything, oops, except what we crossed off. So, I did not cross off this guy. I did not cross off this guy, and I did not cross off that solid. So there is my full net ionic equation. My spectators were the potassium and the nitrate. All right, um, I want you to pause the video. Let's see if we got this. I gave you who was aqueous, who was solid, but I would like you to write the complete ionic equation and the net ionic equation. All right, you can check your answers. Hopefully you got something that looks similar to me. Thanks for watching.